Okay guys, welcome to DTT Leader Sim. Um, today we're looking at putting together a model of component parts and assembly. So what we'll do is we'll look at um, opening a variety of component parts. I'm going to go to new and I'm going to look at an assembly. Now this looks very similar to the standard drawing template sheet you've seen and used before. Um, we can add component parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to browse um, and I'm going to find the appropriate folder. So where you need to go is you need to go into your shared drive and in your shared drive you need to look for CAD. In CAD hit SOLIDWORKS and then Lego Mesh and there's all the component parts that you need saved in that file. The first part that we obviously need to choose here is going to be the body. So I'm going to select the body and open it up. You then can uh, click the ones that says free float and I'm going to pop it in. I'm going to zoom out. Now this is the main section of our product. Um, within uh, SOLIDWORKS when you're making an assembly the items either are fixed or they're floating and one of the ways that you can check that is with right click and as you can see that this currently says float. What that means is that the part is currently fixed, it's always in the opposite state. That's very useful in terms of the fact that if I want other components to move around this central core then they'll do so. Um, if this one was floating then when I come to move components using the move component uh, tool what will happen is that everything will move and float around the screen which will make my life slightly difficult. So first thing to do, right click on your component and check that your option here says float. If it says fix, click that so that it then says float so it's in the opposite state. At this stage, um, this is my first component part and I'm actually looking at straight away completing a technical drawing for this. So I'm going to open up my template. You should have your Lego template saved somewhere. When I open it up, uh, the first thing to do is to actually modify our screen. I'm going to modify my text, I'm going to right click, go to edit sheet format. We've all done this before and I'm just going to type in uh, Lego body. I can check the other materials are all correct, uh, the scale should automatically change. I'm going to right click, edit sheet, zoom back out. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the view planet tool. In the view planet tool I've got my Lego one up. Part of the reason for that, or the exact reason for that, is the fact that currently my assembly is not saved. So the first thing that you need to do is to save your assembly, and I'm going to save mine as Lego Man and click save. Having done that, I can then minimize this and go back to my template, and you'll see that in here I then have other options including Lego Man. So I'll click on Lego Man. If this doesn't pre populate straight away, then use the refresh button here. Choosing my views, I'm going to go for the front view drop that one in. This view is a little bit small, remember this is the parent, so what I'm going to do is I'll come back to that in a second and make it larger. Set my views out in our standard L-shaped pattern. Click on this. Um, I want hidden detail because that's important for us here. And I am then going to use my own scale. So let's come back at 1 to 1. Way too small. Let's go 1 to 5. Way too small. Let's go the opposite way then. Let's 2 to 1. 5 to 1. Uh, 5 to 1 actually works quite nicely for this at uh, this stage of the uh, product um, but I'm going to be adding lots of extra component parts and I know I am so I'm just going to reduce that to 2 to 1 so it's in one single view there so click 2 to 1 2 as this is the, you'll notice that when I change this one only this view changes when I choose this one the whole lot changes because this is the parent these are the children screen tip that back to my view palette and then I'm going to add in my isometric view the isometric view uh, I'm going to make rendered and I'm going to green tick that. Now for this particular um, exercise we don't actually need uh, any dimensions in this so at this stage you should save your uh, sheet and you should now print this off because what's going to happen is as you add component parts it will update on this screen. So, minimizing that, back to my assembly. So this is where we're now going to start adding in more component parts and putting the whole thing together. I'm going to use the insert component. I'm going to go back to browse, and I'm going to find in my shared drive find the component parts. For this to work effectively for you, you will need to take all these parts um, prior to this tutorial as it started, as it stated at the beginning 
and save these into your area to make them work. Um, this needs to be done prior to taking on the tutorial, so make sure that's already happened. Um, I'm now going to add in the head. So the head revolve, open it up, and I can drop it in. So we're now going to use the make component tool. Make. The first thing to do is identify elements that you can make. I can make this cylinder to this cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll over it. Um, you'll notice that when I do this, I don't use an edge. I use an actual face. You can use edges, but they're a little bit more tricky um, and a little bit more temperamental. Having clicked one, I'm going to click the opposite. And you'll notice the parts then sit together. At this stage, I could use the move component tool and I could slide it up and down, but you'll notice I can't move it in any other direction, although I can spin the face around. So move the face to the front. Do click that. Onto my make tool. And this is where you're going to have to be a little bit more careful in terms of zooming in and making sure you're selecting the right faces. Bottom of the head. Top of the shoulders. And it pops it together like that. Now I want to check that this is in the right place. I'm going to use my section view tool here. So you could do the same. And just drag this through and what you'll find is when you drag through you can see there is a very small gap where the two sit together um, because it's a friction fit um, I don't need to see any more than that I can see there's a gap there's no overlap or anything like that so I'm going to drag across that now if I, minim if I now click save minimize open up my technical drawing you can now see that we've now got the head on the body and this is your second stage so we need to change the name of the sheet, so edit sheet format, and what we're going to do is we're going to say Lego Man 2, right click on the sheet, edit sheet, and at this stage you should then print off again. So you should now have two drawings. Uh, my suggestion is that at this stage you make sure that you take them to uh, your tutor who will then make sure that you're actually doing this correctly and there aren't any sort of minor mistakes otherwise what will happen is you'll continue making those mistakes and then they'll all be wrong and as there's six parts of this you don't want to have to print all those out over and over again so I'm going to minimise that back to Lego Man and I'm going to insert some more components so back to Browse and um, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the leg hanger okay so it's floating around let's drop it into space what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the top face to the bottom face here and green tick it. If I was now to then make the front face to this front edge, the two will slide together, but you'll also notice that along this back edge we've actually stepped in. Um, we're going to have to do a distance make to get this one correct because of the fact that the flat panel here is actually smaller than the bottom of the Lego Man body. So I am going to red cross that because I don't want to do that make. Uh, within this, if you make any mistakes, you can click on the plus here and you can change your makes and you can also view your makes from here. I am now going to look at doing this front edge to here as a make. But instead of using a face mate, I'm going to actually use a distance mate. I'm going to click on the distance. Now I know that the mate here should be 0 0.05, so we need to enter those that in. Uh, clicking anywhere on the screen allows it then to update. And if we look at this, you'll notice that it's actually gone the wrong way. So we've got quite a gap on this side and overlap on this side. Um, what I can do is I can click flip direction, and it then shimmies it across in the right place. I'm going to green tick that. I'm now going to do the same style of make, so make from this end onto the edge here. Again, it links the two so they're completely flat and flush, but you'll notice there's a large overlap here. We're going to use another distance make here, and this one is going to be 0.42. So clicking on that, and you'll notice it's now equidistant either side. Green tick, green tick it, and we now have the make step. Once again, save it minimize it. So back to the technical drawing, get the hanger in place, right click on the sheet, edit sheet format. Let's be imaginative and go for Lego Man 3. Right click, edit sheet, and then we'll go and print this one off again. Next step. Okay, 
before we move on further we need to check that this is completely in the right place and one of the ways you can do that as you go through this is to use the evaluate tab so i'm going to click on the evaluate tab and i'm looking for the interference detection the whole idea of this is that we can see problems and component aspects which actually want to occupy the same space so click on uh, interference detection and then i'm looking at this click calculate uh, we get a ringing noise and it starts to show us now we have four interferences but what you'll notice is that each of them are exactly the same that's because in the model underneath the component parts um, within the body so if I just hide that for a moment these component parts in the body here are actually designed to be flexible and move they create an interference fit which means that the leg hanger means that it sits very tightly into the bottom and stops the uh, leg and hand from falling apart Obviously I can't see my part here, so I'm just going to go back to this here first, same as it would be if you were manufacturing a part out of single components. I can right click on there, and I can show component and bring it back. Okay, at this stage we're now going to add both legs. So back to our assembly, insert components, browse. Uh, let's go for the left leg, click open, bring it on. Let's go for a mate. So we're going to use um, a cylinder there. And it's a concentric mate because it's two circles fixed down together, so another circle there. Pings it around, green tick it. Uh, at that stage, we can then go to the mate this space through here. Let me get those in place, and you can see how the part is now floating in place. Green tick it. We'll then insert the second leg, insert component, browse. Once it's done, just brought in the same leg again. We've got a list of component parts here. Very easy to remove. Right click, delete, say yes. So into my insert components, browse, pick the leg, drop it in. So I'm using my mouse to zoom in, make sure I'm picking the correct faces, etc. etc. Um, I'm going to show you that you can use an edge sometimes on the stick. So I can make this edge and I could make that to this edge. Automatically drops it in place. Um, sometimes edge mates can be quite useful. Now I can, if I choose, move component parts, see what they look like, make sure they're in the right place. Whatever you do here will then affect obviously your technical drawing. So I'll minimize the sheet and go back to my presentation drawing and as you can see I've got Lego Man now stood. Now when you're looking at this this adds confusion to the drawing because things are not actually level or straight. So I'm going to nip back in here and I want these to be straight. So what I can do, first of all I can make that one to that one which is fine. Equally I can make an edge down here to another straight edge somewhere on here what that does is it means that the two are parallel, green tick it, and now Lego Man is stood up straight, which when then we come to look at it in our technical drawing, means it's nice and easy to read. So, same as again, edit sheet, fall, and this should be printed off again. We're now going to insert the arms. So there's one. And two. For this one, I'm going to make this circle to our inner circle here. And I'm then going to make this flat face to the flat face here. Green tick. Kind of move it around so it's in the right, pretty much the right position. Happy with that. Another mate. Green tick. Flat face. 
do our flat face here. So let's keep that. And then we have him with his arms. Range it, minimize, back to our technical drawing. As you can see, the arms are placed. Right click, edit sheet. Change the name to five. Um, at this stage, we're now ready to put in the final steps, which are his arms, uh, sorry, his hands, insert components, browse, find the hands, both the hands are the same, so we can open it up, zoom in, and we'll make this one to the inside of there. Right, this one very usefully is mated around the wrong way, and you'll find that quite often when you mate stuff, it flicks around the wrong direction. The button here we've got mate alignment, and whichever button is not option is not uh, depressed. So when you depress, click that around, and it flicks it around so it's in the right place. Um, now I've got a very small edge in here that I need to get to. So to make my life easy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the component. I'm actually going to drag his arm out, and then I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to mate inside edge here. the face there, green tick it. Okay, now again, uh, what we've got here is we've got an aspect where the hand is actually rotated. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make that flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to mate the top surface of the hand to the top of the body, which flips it around. Now if I leave that where it is, it means that I'm actually going to have a lot of trouble in moving the arm because it's fixed, because it's over-defined. What I can do, however, is look for the mate, and you'll notice that we've got the two sides. Right-click here and delete it. Having deleted that, it doesn't mean that any of these components move, as in they don't move when you delete them, but it will now mean that I can then continue to play with it. Um, or I can then move the arm and it will stay in the same orientation. So I'll now insert the other hand Same mate process. Uh, I'm going to mate top surface of that, top surface of that, so it's parallel. Green tick. One mega map. Minimize it. And then you've got your options here, again, final edit sheet, and then you print that off, uh, that will then give you your six different images. Uh, the next tutorial will look at then adding colour and rendering it, um, which will then allow you then to do photorealistic images rather than just the grey options you see here, uh, although that's not necessary for the particular sheets you're printing off. Okay, thanks for watching DT TV.